Welcome to the Arkham Files, an actual play Call of Cthulhu RPG podcast. Featuring Seth Morrison as Tallahassee Turner. Say, hey, Billy, let's run out in the forest together. That worked out for me really well last time. Abel Morrison as Detective Billy McConnell. You've seen what we've seen. That dead light, the butthole monster. Donovan Bollard as Dr. Simeon Can't Stand Your Bits. What in the world? Where did you find that? Peter Morrison as Dominic Drunkard. We did establish there's no flamethrower, which is a crying shame. Sam Morrison as Major Frederick Aloysius Bakersfield. As soon as the going gets tough, the Tallahassee gets going. And I am your game master, the keeper of arcane lore, Alex Morrison. Now grab onto some dice and your sanity. Let's roll. Fate, destiny, providence, fortune, doom. So many different words all meaning the same thing. Words in every language, concepts in every culture describing an idea of inevitability. That despite his actions, a person will inevitably become what he was always meant to be. He is fated destined, that a place, in spite of all efforts, will inevitably fall to ruin. It is cursed. It is doomed. Fate is defined as a state or end that seemingly has been decided beforehand. But in a universe created from and perpetually in chaos, could there really be such a thing as fate? How could anything have been decided beforehand? Even with the ubiquity of the idea in our collective consciousness, the human spirit seems to rebel against any hand placed over its destiny. Our hubris knows that in this monumental sea of swirling chaos that is our universe, we are directly at the center of it and we weave our own dance with sound and fury. If there is a fate, then we are its arbiters. We decide the course. We uphold the order. In our arrogance, we are Atlas. Though hunched and bent with the weight of the world on our shoulders, we hold fast and keep the spheres aloft. If it falls, it will be because we have chosen or we have failed, but it will be because of us. We will have let it fall. But is this all just an illusion? Is it just our arrogance? Even Atlas, in all his might and grandeur, is but a carving, chiseled out of stone to be exactly what he is and do exactly as he does. The world does not rest upon his shoulders, nor does he hold it through his strength. This is an illusion. They are in fact one and the same, just pieces of the same object, a closed system that together will fall to the ultimate inevitability of all things, that is entropy. A state or end that has seemingly been decided beforehand, but decided by whom? If not by our insignificant efforts, then what could possibly have the power to bend the forces of reality to its will? Is there a plan, or is it all just an illusion? Even if there is a plan, who is to say that the planner is benevolent, that their interests do not lie in our suffering, or that we even merit its concern at all? that in spite of our frantic dance of sound and fury, tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow will prove it to signify nothing. That in the end, everything will fall. That our only fate is our doom. This is the Arkham Files, Case 003, The Fall of New Jerusalem. September. 1925, the Jameson Cabin, on the outskirts of New Salem, Massachusetts. Turner! Turner! Turner, get your head up, man! Get your head down! <laughs> it looks like we found ourselves in a bit of a dust-up, isn't it? Well, we're gonna have to take this hill, Turner. Are you ready? Turner, where are you, man? Tallahassee, look at me. Wake up. 
What? Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Found ourselves in a bit of a dust up here, but it's bully, just bully. We can take this and give the Spaniards what for. Everyone will remember the Rough Riders as something to go down in history. The taking of San Juan Hill. Turner, steal yourself. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, grab onto your musket and your courage. <laughs> Here we go. Charge! Tallahassee Turner, Teddy Roosevelt, leads the charge up San Juan Hill ahead of you. Bullets flying everywhere, over your head, striking the dirt next to you. You see a man go down next to you, off to your right, as you're running. Another to the left. Tallahassee Turner, what do you do? I'll turn and fire. Roll. Roll your rifle firearms. Oh, uh, I got a 77. Uh, out of 25. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hit. You see a Spaniard go down. You cycle the bolt on the action. As you continue to charge up behind Teddy Roosevelt. You see a trench ahead of you. What do you do, Tallahassee Turner? I dive into the trench, taking cover. Roosevelt jumps in ahead of you, pulls a saber from his scabbard, and starts laying, laying in to his left and right, striking down defenders wearing Spanish uniforms that have entrenched themselves on this hill. What do you do, Tallahassee? Well done, sir. That's how you take them. Ah, oh, come on, Turner! Draw that saber! Give them what for! I pull out my cavalry saber and prepare myself to charge. Alright. Roll your fighting brawl. A Spaniard rushes towards you, trying to bayonet you. I got a 50 out of 50. Success! <laughs> Alright, you deflect aside his bayonet and you. You slice right across this chest, bringing him down. Another one comes up behind you, attempting the same. Roll your fighting brawl. I ain't got any chance against Tallahassee Turner with Ooh, my own nine. Nine. That's an extreme. You turn just in time to deflect his strike and then stab him straight through the chest <laughs> and he drops immediately. You're being surrounded. There are Spaniards Close everywhere. Man. Spaniards everywhere. Tallahassee, you just start swinging and laying waste to the defenders around you. Spaniards are dropping left and right as your your cavalry saber rises and falls, rises and falls. Before you know it, you are the only one standing in this trench on San Juan Hill. But as you look around at the defenders in Spanish uniforms, Something catches your eye. What's that? You look down and hmm. at the faces of the men you have just slain. And they don't look like Spanish soldiers. As you reach down, you grab one of their uniforms and turn them over enough so you, over more so you can see his face better. <sighs> Looking back at you is the face of Billy McConnell. Billy. You look to the man next to you. Billy. It's what? Dr. Simeon can't stand your bits. Simeon? He's been stabbed through the chest. No. Next to him, Don Drumcard, uh, also Dom. slain, wearing a Spanish unicorn. What? Unicorn? <laughs> Dom, you're that's on not, the unicorn that's correct. now. That's, that's exactly how Dom dresses. <laughs> wearing a Spanish unicorn costume, just like Dom Drumcard would be. It's my favorite unicorn costume. <laughs> <laughs> he is, he's wearing a Spanish unicorn. That's what he's wearing. And suddenly, you're, you're confused. What? You turn. Aloysius Bakersfield is lying dead at your feet. Meh. <laughs> There's one more body. You reach who's, over. Who's this? You turn it over and... Huh. What? This... This isn't a man. It's... It's... It's a woman. It's a woman. It's a... It's a blonde <gasps> woman. 
with a stylish short bob in the 1920s flapper fashion. She's short and has an athletic build. A name starts to come to you. Mary. Lower your guns. No. Move, move over there. Move over by him, over in the corner. No! All right. Hey, Mr. Uh, what are you, a, a cop? You look like a cop. So it's your job to help people, huh? Well, you know, you're gonna have to make a decision. Are you gonna catch the bad guy or are you gonna help your friend? Oh. Hey, uh, wake up. Turner. Turner. Hey, wake up, man. Wake up. You all right? Turner, you okay? Tallahassee, Turner, that's your name, right? Yeah, yeah, it is. Sorry, I, th I think I got caught in a mental net. Nah, you, you're just, uh, look like you're having a bad dream there, man. You doing okay? Yeah, I'm always okay. Tallahassee, you wake up on the floor of a cabin, surrounded by your comrades who are, who are sleeping, piled around near you. It's been ten hours since the event in Orchard Run. You've been asleep, you notice you're covered in sweat. There's a man kneeling over, kneeling and leaning over you. You recognize this is Brent Jameson, Major Bakersfield friend who owns this cabin that you guys drove to last night after the end of the events at Orchard Run. You got in around two o'clock in the morning. You, you all right there, uh, you all right there, Turner? You seem like you're having a bad dream. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing okay. Uh, nothing, no big deal here. I just, uh, I just sweat a lot. It's because I'm manly. Manly? Manly. Oh. I'm manly. Men sweat. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know what you, I know what you mean, Turner. I, I, I have those manly night sweats sometimes, too. <laughs> <laughs> It's uh, I think it comes from being in the Great War. Um. Yeah. So you look around and and in the light you can see it a little bit better. But you're in a, a small but well kept old cabin. Uh, it's a little run down, but you wouldn't call it shabby. You'd call it broken in or well loved, like a favorite pair of old reliable shoes, or an old. Or an old reliable net that never lets you down. <laughs> <laughs> you arrived here last night, and uh, Jameson got you set up just in the main living room area here. There's a, a fireplace. There's a, a couch. A small kitchen off to the side. There's, there's one room off of this main room that's, that's Jameson's bedroom. But the whole cabin is pretty much this one room. The rest of you are just crashed out on the floor in blankets, wherever you could find. Nobody really talked once they got here. Bakersfield introduced you all to Jameson, but everybody fell asleep pretty quickly. Yeah, well, it's it's coming on about uh, about noon, Turner, but I decided it'd probably be best if I let you all sleep in. You, uh, you look like you could you could use it. I would have say you all looked like uh, warmed over crap when you came in, but none of you all looked particularly warm. So we just looked like crap? Yeah, that's that's what I was getting at. Okay. Sorry, Tallahassee sometimes a little slow. <laughs> uh, so the, west, the rest of you guys begin to awaken uh. to the now bright noonday sun that's streaming in the windows looking around. It's hard to believe that it, it seems like a different world from the one you drove out of last night. A storm that seemed like the storm to end all storms that that slowly faded and faded and drew off as you got closer to Jameson's cabin. As you took the fork in the road that headed south away from Dunwich and down towards New Salem, Massachusetts. So it's been 10 hours since the events at Orchard Run. You're all feeling pretty beat up, broken. Tallahassee, 
something in your mind doesn't feel quite right. That dream you just had seemed so real. Seemed just like the events of when you were there back at San Juan Hill with Teddy Roosevelt. You remember it like it was yesterday. And that dream really brought everything back. Right up until the end when there was somebody you can't quite place. Billy McConnell, Tallahassee Turner, Dr. Simeon Can't Stand Your Bits, Dom Drincard, Major Aloysius Bakerfield. What do you do? Well, gents, what do we... What are we going to do? Keep heading in, on to New Jerusalem? Gear up? Patch ourselves up? Yeah, I think we need to get a move on as soon as possible. Yeah, I, I think so too. I'll uh, pull the truck around. Uh, Jameson. Yeah. You got any, like, extra bullets and, uh, uh, nets? <laughs> <laughs> Does he have any bullets or nets? <laughs> Tell him, Jameson. <laughs> of course I do. Come on. I wasn't, uh, I didn't serve under Major Aloysius Bakersfield without knowing to always have extra bullets and nets around. Does anybody need anything to gear up to some degree before we leave? Dom? Yeah, can we get uh, a flamethrower for Dom Drum card? I'd really like that. Oh. Oh, I got a flamethrower. I'll take that. <laughs> uh, no, he doesn't have a flamethrower. No, I don't have a flamethrower. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> Nobody has a flamethrower, okay? Uh, just so you guys know, you did gear up pretty effectively before you left Arkham. Yeah, I think our truck's like the day full before. Of stuff. That's why you got the truck that you got, so you could load up as much gear as you could. Yeah, Dom Drew Card got us the truck, and we uh, stocked up at. My uh, guns, ammo, and chicks. Well, I didn't have all that much in my inventory until I took Jake's shotgun. Yeah, um, we didn't get down to we didn't get down to like a nitty gritty of exactly everything you have in your truck, uh, but except for we did we did establish there's no flamethrower, which is a crime. No f- we yes, we did establish there is no flamethrower, and there is still one fully assembled Molotov cocktail. Oh, that's mine. Is that it, has been established. Is it still lit? In, in concrete. <laughs> still lit. It's still lit. Just waiting for us <laughs> to throw it. Been burning for 10 hours. Yeah. Um, but I, you guys can assume that you have about just about all the immu- ammunition you could need. You have lots of ammunition for your guys, whatever firearms that you have. You have you have a couple spare shotguns. You have some spare rifles. How about like, uh, a, rifles. like a machete? Can I have one of those? Yeah, you can have a machete. That's fine. Oh, sweet. I'm in. So do we know like where we're going? Do I need to like pull out a map and kind of you know where map you're going? Um, okay. Jameson's cabin is on the way to New Salem, which uh, Bakersfield. That's why Bakersfield brought you guys this way. Him and Jameson go way back, uh, obviously to the war and before. Um, well, not before actually. Yeah, they served in the war or they served in the military. Well, yeah, before the war, they're in the military together, and then they served in the war together. Um, and so they go way back. Uh, it just turned out that Jameson happened to live out in this area when you guys discovered where New Salem was. And so you decided to drive here, stop off for the night, and then finish off the drive to New Salem So can in the morning. Can we assume then that we told Jameson everything, or does he have any idea what's going on? No, we didn't tell him everything. That's up to you guys. That's up to you what you want I mean, to tell. We just murdered a girl. We ain't, yeah. ain't going to tell her. Tell him. He knows why we're here, but he doesn't know how we got here. Well, I'm just, you know, I'm thinking, like, the more people we have, sometimes the better we can fight things off. So I'm wondering if we should invite him. I'm going to leave a plastic cup with him. We'll take one. What? If we need him, <laughs> we'll call him up. <laughs> All right. I, I don't think we should drag anybody else into this, guys. I mean, this is, like, some heavy stuff. It's, you know, You know what I'm saying? It's, like, really hard to process. I think we should just keep it who we got. Jameson's a bit of a loner. Uh, it's kind of a shut-in these days. Uh, does Jameson wonder why Tallahassee has a terrible bullet wound in his stomach? Oh yeah, I'm wounded. Ow! Oh, my belly! <laughs> <laughs> um, That's right, you got shot. Yeah, once you got patched up, you realized it wasn't as bad as you thought. Oh, yeah. So yeah, if you guys, uh, if you guys head back out on the road, you came in um, back on that main road, if you can call it a main road. Keep going south. You're going to uh, 
you're gonna pass uh, you're gonna pass a farm on your way down and you just keep heading on down that's the uh, that's the Leighton, the Leighton farm it's gonna be right about where the road turns down turn down keep going south and it's, it's just about another 30 45 minutes down to, to New Salem all right well Jameson I just want to let you know before we go remember talk to your father write to him and remember Jameson it was not your fault it's not your fault. Oh, oh my God. Oh, you're right. You're right. Oh, I hate my it's not father. your fault. Come here. Come here. That's oh, gosh. it. Bring it in. Oh. Cry, uh, cry into these calm tits. <laughs> uh, All right. Are you a. Uh, so, y'all sure that you want to go ahead and ride off down to New Salem right now? You. You. I mean, I don't mean to be rude, but y'all look terrible. Yeah, Jameson, I appreciate the concern, but we need to get on the road as soon as possible. We came out here to do a job, and I don't think we're the only ones that came out here. I don't know. Maybe he's got an idea there. Maybe we should uh, hang out for a few days and recover. You know, you, you, I mean, can't stand you, bitch. You almost died. Can I, you know. can I, since I was injured and we are up here in this cabin, maybe Jameson has a little bit of first aid skills or medicine or something. Can I do something to recover a few hit points? Uh, you did recover from your first aid, I believe, last night. You also recovered another hit point from being, from resting here. Um, if you guys noticed that. But, okay, all right, Jameson, just step away for a minute. Guys, group huddle here for a second. Group hug. Yeah. Maybe I might need a group hug, but yeah, to to Billy's point, like <clears throat> let's don't rush in too quick and let's let's think through this for a second. I mean, theoretically, the horror we are racing to meet has been there for quite some time. I don't know a if day we have or time two to waste, probably but... won't make right. much of a difference. Look, I get what you're all saying, but listen to me. We are not the only ones that came out here looking for Corbett's monster. How do you know? Because I went and spoke to him. What? I went to the sanatorium where they're keeping Corbett, and I asked him a few questions. And you're just sharing this information now? After we go through on, that entire thing it was a the few days ago. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now shut up and pay attention. Here's what happened. Arkham Sanatorium, three days ago. All right, so uh, just make sure you don't be touching nothing around here. Don't be looking in any of these other rooms. I've got a lot of people. I know you see all these doors and hallways, but don't be looking down any of these. Don't be looking in anywhere. You, you must got some friends in high places, I guess, because there ain't nobody been let in over here to talk to him. Not that it's going to do you any good, because he hasn't been talking to anybody at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know the drill. All right. It's just up here. Don't let these... Don't let none of this fool you. All these all these clean lines and white everywhere. This is kind of only partially a hospital. And don't let... Don't let what I'm wearing fool you. I will still whip your butt up and down these halls if you step out of line. You got that? <laughs> all right. Keep your shirt on. All right. Like I said, all right. He's in here. I'll be right outside the door, so if you need anything, or anything goes wrong, just holler and I'll be right in. You got five minutes, all right? Hey, what's your name? Name's John. Call me Little John. Alright, so he opens the door, and what you see is a stark white bedroom with bars on the windows. There is a table in there and a bed. The orderly goes in with you and gestures Corbett to come over and sit down at the table. All right, come on, Corbett, come over here, sit down. You gotta put these on. Uh, he puts some handcuffs on him when he sits him down on the table. If I hear anything going on in here, that goes for you, Corbett. I'm right outside, I'll be right in. And you're not going to like what's going to happen. All right, John. I got it from here. All right. 
he goes out and he uh, he's looking at you. He's looking at Corbett, and he walks outside the door and shuts it. So if you go over and you sit down at the table, Corbett is sitting across from you, and he looks haggard. He just has a dead look in his eyes. He's not looking at you. He's just sitting there, kind of staring off into space, looking off to the side. Not really looking at anything. His eyes just seem kind of glazed over. So, this is the kind of place they lock psychopathic killers up in, huh? (laughs) The only place you belong, Corbett, is in the ground. There's no response. He's still just staring off into space. Corbett, are you in there? I kind of uh, slam my fist down on the table. Corbett, I know you're in there. You're not fooling me. So I'm just going to get started. We know about the other gate, or whatever you call it, that you were working on. What do you want, Bakersfield? (laughs) There you are. I want to know what this other gate was meant for. What else are you trying to bring? What gate are you talking about? I didn't have any other gate, Bakersfield. I just had the one. My beautiful, beautiful creation that you murdered. We know you had something else planned in a place, for whatever reason, you continued to refer to as New Jerusalem. But I know the real name. Oh, so you're the one who ended up with my journals. I was wondering why nobody had asked about them. Yeah, you're not going to get away with anything, Corbett. We're way ahead of you. (laughs) Are you? You have no idea what you're getting into, Bakersfield. You stumbled onto what I was doing. You found your way into my house. You broke your way down into my basement and you found my creation. But you have no idea what's going on. Why don't you fill me in then? Tell me about this scheme, this plot you have going on. You bumbled your way into this and through Like the way you always do, or like most people of your kind, you shot and destroyed and blasted your way through everything beautiful to get what you needed. Somehow you managed to stop what I was doing. But that wasn't of any intelligent deduction. I've seen a lot of evil in this world. And you might think you're really something, but you're just another chump. (laughs) You think you've seen evil, Bakersfield? You have no idea. There are other things out there, Bakersfield. God, the devil, these are older. Much, much older and so much worse. And they're going to stay exactly where they belong. Now cut the crap, Corbett. You think I don't recognize code when I see it? You think I don't know that you wrote your journals in a way specifically to confuse those reading it? The Germans pulled the same stuff, and how well do you think that worked out for them? I know New Jerusalem isn't the real name, or at least not anymore. Now it's called New Salem. Oh, so maybe you're not as much of a fool as I thought, Bakersfield. You found it, huh? Oh, and you're looking for it. (laughs) And you know what? I think I want you to find it. But you're still not asking the right questions, Bakersfield. You say you know that I lied in my own journals. I was obscuring things in my own journals. But why would I do that? If I was writing things just for myself, why wouldn't I tell the truth? I don't have time to try and figure out what goes on inside your head. So why don't you just tell me? Well, that's just too bad, Bakersfield, because time is all I have. And that's all because of you and your little friends. You really think you have time? You really think John, the orderly, is going to be able to come in here and stop me before I snap your neck? Uh, all right, why don't you roll uh, roll an intimidate for me, Bakersfield? All right. Woo! 51 out of 59. Oh, nice. All right, that's a success. 
Always to violence, Bakersfield. Always the soldier. Look, you want to know? You want to know why? Why I would obscure things in my own personal journals? Maybe if you'd actually think about it for a second, Bakersfield, instead of always trying to punch and shoot your way through. Maybe because I thought someone else might be reading them. Someone like Rama Sekva. Rama Sekva. <laughs> he doesn't need to read my journals, Bakersfield. He can read my mind. He's in my mind, and he has been for so long. You have no idea what this is. The universe, our reality, it seems so solid to you, Bakersfield, so absolute. This table, these chains, wood and steel held together in diamond lattice connections. Really, it's all just a tissue paper facade held together by chewing gum and balls of twine. Yeah, whatever. Who is Mordecai Shep? What's your affiliation with him? Mordecai is... He's like Thomas Shevsky. He's just a nobody who I'm paying money to help me out. So he's another body snatcher. More like a body keeper. What do you think is up there in New Jerusalem, Bakersfield? You read my journals. You know what's there. Something like that abomination we found in your basement? Oh, it's not like that. That was just a child. What you found, that was my child. What's waiting for you in New Jerusalem? That is no child. Some things, some things are made to do like you a little bit, Bakersfield, created to do violence. But some things are the perfect form of it. Is anyone else involved besides Mordecai? That's the question you should be asking, Bakersfield. There are others out there that would recognize things. Others that are interested in my work, Bakersfield, you're not the only one. People I thought I only shared some of my interests. This occult fad that's going on. But no, somehow they knew. Somehow they perceived that flicker of the true understanding. A kinship between all of those who have stared into the abyss. You have it now, Bakersfield. I can see it in you. That once you see the things that lie just beyond what we should know about, it changes you. And you can see it. They saw it in me. And once I knew what to look for, I saw it in them. Great. So there's a whole bunch of Corbett's out there bent on bringing about the destruction of all mankind. Oh, we're everywhere, Bakersfield. You have no idea how many. Neither did I. Well, they ain't getting very far. I'll make sure of that. You say that, but I've been in here for months, Bakersfield. Months. And here you are, still running around in circles. You're here asking me questions. You obviously haven't been up to New Jerusalem. I think you might be way behind the rest. Well, don't worry, because I'm going to catch up real quick. Oh, I hope you do catch up, Bakersfield. I hope you do catch up to it. It's beautiful. And when you see it, I hope you remember me. All right, that's it. Time's up. Good luck, Bakersfield. I'm going to punch him. Um, all right. <laughs> that's so you don't forget what's real. And what's fiction? Hey, what are you doing? No, you cut that out. All right, that's enough. You're getting out of here. Come on. You're going with me. <laughs> ah, glad you're ready for violence, Bakersfield. Too bad you're just an amateur. <laughs> I'll tell Tomaszewski you said hi. Little John grabs you, uh, roughly pulls you away, and ushers you out the door. Slams it shut as you hear Corbett's laughter trailing <laughs> off behind you. <laughs> and that is why we can't afford to wait any longer. 
So basically, we're going to go fight a bigger, more violent butthole monster. And a bunch of Corbett's. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, Tallahassee just starts walking back to Arkham. <laughs> <laughs> So Bakersfield finishes his his uh, retelling of the events of three days ago. But for real, like, uh, I don't know about this, gents. Like, I think Tallahassee's going to... I'm just going to head home, I think, write another book or something. This is getting, like, this is getting too intense. So for real, like, we found this huge monster in some guy's basement. He built it out of body parts from people, right? Like in the books, it's all, it's all like exciting. You can do things. You come back home and you're all, you're all normal. But we just tackled and brutally like murdered this lady Mary. I mean, this is getting freaking intense. Well, technically, you guys tackled and brutally murdered Mary. <laughs> <laughs> I, hope, I hope you feel real good about yourself standing and watch. Is that really the measure of the great Tallahassee? What's that supposed to You finally to mean? get set out on a real adventure, and as soon as the tough gets going, the Tallahassee gets going. <laughs> <laughs> as, soon, as soon as the going gets tough, the Tallahassee gets going. Tallahassee, look at me. Look at me. I'm looking at you. Look at Papa. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what's really going on inside. Okay. All right. I'll get real with you guys. We tackled a lady and painted blood on her face and then watched her get burned alive from the inside out. Does that not bother any of you guys? That was unfortunate, yes. Yeah, that bothers me a lot. I kind of think... Like, a lot. Really, I mean... Think of how many people the Deadlight might have killed had we not stopped it. Thank you, Druncard. Finally, someone with some sense. I understand that we're... I mean, we're sta kind of standing at the edge right now. But what do you want to do? Go back? Like you said. Do you really want to live your adventures or do you just want to write about them? I've gone... years looking for the kind of answers that we're just at the edge of finding now. I don't care if anybody else turns back. I'm moving on, I'm going forward, and I don't care what it takes. All right, fine, let's, if we got our gear, I mean, I'm struggling with this. I'll try to figure out, you know, how to get through it. Let's move forward and if you guys happen to get distracted and not disappear, just don't worry about it. Just keep going. Look, let's just get through this one last thing. Then everyone can go home, but we can forget all about it. All right, I guess... Okay, so we're just hopping in the truck and heading out then? That's the question that I have, though. Based on your conversation with Corbett, what makes you think we need to be in such a hurry? What specifically that he said makes you think we need to, to get there today? He basically said, we're not the only ones after his creation. And he implied that we are way behind. I mean, this was months ago that we killed that abomination in his basement <clears throat> either way I I think we've waited long enough I think we need to head to New Jerusalem and find this Mordecai Shep yeah I agree with Bakersfield I think uh, there's no time to waste and given the supernatural situation here I, I think we just need to put our our doubts and struggles aside Tallahassee I'm struggling with the same thing I pledged myself to the law and we've done some pretty shady stuff but the, just the situation it's all supernatural I mean in normal circumstances you know we wouldn't be doing this stuff but I mean you've seen what we've seen that dead light and the butthole monster I mean <laughs> <laughs> come on guys this isn't normal stuff and I, I think we just got to see this through to the end so I'm with Bakersfield I think we need to get going all right, let me just change my shirt. I'm sweaty. Okay, so... So something I want to uh, establish here from the events at the end of Deadlight. So Tallahassee Turner, you lost, I believe, more than 10 points of sanity during the events of Deadlight, which is more than a fifth of your sanity, 
which according to the game rules makes you indefinitely insane. So until you can get to a place and get some treatment, you are under the status of indefinitely insane. So what does he got to do? Like roll for insanity? So normally as the way the game is supposed to work as the sanity rules go. So I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I'm changing that up a little bit. So normally in the, so this is for your listeners out there too, for the way this works is once you hit, um, indefinitely insane, anytime you lose even one point of sanity, you have a bout of madness. Oh, so, um, I didn't, I, I don't want to do that just because it's going to, because we're right at the beginning of the scenario. So I don't want Tallahassee, like just flipping out at the drop of the hat every five minutes. Um, so rather than that, I'm going to play it a little bit differently. Um, you're still going to have effects Tallahassee, but it's not necessarily going to be, we're going to be rolling on a table and, and you're going to, you know, deal with whatever pops up on the table, but I'm going to try and make it a little more narrative. Um, based and and tie it into whatever's going on at the time so one thing i want to tell you tallahassee too there is an option that you can take if there's something that happens so i'm not even going to tell you if something is if you're having a bout of madness there might just be something happening that's going to be weird or maybe it's normal you're not going to be able to know so what you can do is according to the rules is you can choose to make a reality check where you're going to roll against your sanity and if you pass that roll then you basically shake it off and and whatever you're hallucinating or whatever effects that happen are, are going to go away and you're going to return back to uh, clarity. So you'll just start describing something to Tallahassee, being like, you're starting to see this and, I don't and know. we don't know if that's going to be real. I guess we're going to find like out. Like he's going to have to, oh man, that's awesome. Dr. Simi is a psychologist. Can he give Tallahassee some treatment? Uh, he's hopeless. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, Dr. Simeon, you could do some psychoanalysis on, a psychoanalysis on him. All right. But that's going to require Simeon being able to pick up on what's going on with Tallahassee or Tallahassee asking for it. Well, um, did, oh, I can already deduce that there's something going on because he's acting way more cowardly than he usually would. Yeah. Um, something that happened at the end of Deadlight that we actually cut out from the end of the episode. We played it out, so it didn't end up in the published episode. But Tallahassee, your your bout of madness you had right after the end when you guys witnessed Mary Laker's death, uh, you had a bout of amnesia. So particularly this madness is going to take the effect of affecting your memory. What were we talking about, guys? Let's hit the road. Come on. <laughs> what are you guys waiting for? <laughs> So particularly, especially when it comes to Mary Laker, you actually have a very hazy recollection of kind of what happened last night. All right, so, let's get in the truck. Let's go. Let's get moving. Uh, where do you think we can go um, find out about this Mordecai ship? I think Billy, as a police officer, could probably, uh, you know, pretty much flash his badge at anybody in town and get some information. Well, do we have any connections in uh, New Salem at all? I was going to ask the same. How do we Jameson, know? Jameson, you know anyone down in New Salem we might talk to to uh, get more information on the locals? Uh, yeah, there's, I mean, yeah, I mean, I go down there every so often, pick up supplies, but to be honest, I try and avoid New Salem as much as I can. It's a, New Salem is a bad place. I don't really know how else to say it. They, uh, they're they not exactly friendly. They don't really like outsiders. Um, they're, they're, there's a couple good folk down there, you know. Probably the person I'd recommend the most is maybe uh, Ezra Denny. He's the over owner of the tavern down there. Denny's. <laughs> Denny's. <laughs> Ezra Denny's. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Jameson. We'll uh, check it out. Uh, like I said, it's bad. There's... Not a lot of friendly faces down there in New Salem, so be careful who you talk to and and uh, and just the people that are around. Especially look out for that uh, Ike Watson. He's a local troublemaker, and you know I I call him an animal, but I feel like I'd be insulting to animals. But and also be careful out at night. I thought I've been hearing some bears out in the woods around here lately, so maybe just be careful if you're gonna be out at night. You know, try and stay indoors. All right. Well, as always, Jameson, I appreciate it. Anytime, Bakersfield. All right. So, 
You guys gather up your things, look around, take a last look at the cabin. You know, Jameson gives you a nod as you head out the door down towards your your truck that you have parked out in front in this little side dirt road that leads up to his, to his cabin. Uh, you're in a fairly densely wooded area. So you guys walk down to your truck. Who's driving? Billy. My boy Billy! All right. All right, so Billy McConnell's driving, right? Um, is Bakersfield in the front again? We going same? You know that's right. All right, they set out. All right, so you guys all pile into the truck. You know, standard formation, Billy McConnell driving, Bakersfield riding shotgun, and the other three doofy climbing in the back, sitting on the uh, benches. Okay, so the truck putters off down the, the dirt road, bouncing around on its suspension. Obviously, this is a... I mean, it's it's barely a road. Probably the only reason it's here is because Jameson cut it back in here so he could build his cabin. So as you guys make the turn, heading back on the, you know, quote-unquote, or heading back towards the main road uh, towards uh, towards New Salem... Um, all right, and as you dr- as you guys are driving, uh, I want you to make a, a spot hidden. Abe dropped his dice on his first roll again, so he's true to form. I got, I got an eleven. True to form. Uh, I got a fifty-eight out of twenty-nine. All right, so okay, so sorry, uh, Billy McConnell was the only one who succeeded. Yeah. Okay. So as you're driving, Billy, um, uh, you happen to spot off uh, just off the a little ways off the road to your right. Uh, you see a, a truck that's parked a little ways off the road, kind of, and it's it's fairly lightly obscured by some of the bushes and trees. And you notice what appears to be a campsite uh, right near this truck. And as you look closer, it it looks like it's uh seems to be in uh, quite a bit of disarray. Like it's uh, had bad things happen. Maybe it's okay. a little bit hard to tell from where you're at, but that looks a little sketchy. Uh, I'm gonna pull the truck over. Okay, Billy McConnell starts pulling off, uh, and once you start driving over, you notice the tracks. Oh man, why are we stopping? from the truck pulling off the road over there leading over to uh, to where it's kind of parked underneath a tree so Billy McConnell starts kind of pulling off the road following the tracks heading towards this uh, this campsite that's just, a little ways uh, off the road just FYI I rolled an extreme success just so you know oh okay so yeah uh, you it definitely looks like there's something bad has happened it does not look like a normal amount of disarray on this campsite Hey, Bakersfield, I'm going to pull off here. That, uh, you see that campsite over there? It looks like something bad happened. Uh, maybe we can help out. I don't know, but uh, I think we should check it out. All right, yeah, yeah, I can see it now that you pointed out. Let's, uh, let's, let's go check it out. Here, yeah, let me kill the radio. So yeah, once you get closer and you can see over some of the foliage uh, and through the trees, uh, you see there's a there's a campsite here. There's a, a tent. There's a little fire pit that looks like there was a fire in it. Um, uh, a couple bags, uh, like a knapsack. Uh, but everything is just torn apart. The tent looks shredded and is collapsed. Um, half collapsed on one of its poles. Um, the sleeping bag looks like it's been, it's been pulled out and it's strewn about, and there's tears in it. Uh, there's just there's junk there's just there's just junk flung all over the place. Does it look campsite. like? Uh, well, Jameson said he thought he'd been uh, heard bears. Does it look like an animal 
like a bear attack or like a bear had are we out of the truck gotten into their camp I hopped out of the truck we all get out I explain what's going on to answer your question Bakersfield uh yeah from the looks of it this looks yeah like like maybe a bear or something or an animal got uh, got to this campsite do we want to uh, rifle through the campsite roll any spot hiddens yeah let's let's we'll rifle roll, through their crap and spot hidden spot hidden yeah why don't you guys roll spot hidden Eight. Thirty. Nice. Ooh. Who rolled the eight? Yeah, I got an eight. I got an eighty one. I rolled eighty. <laughs> okay, so uh so uh Tallahassee, you succeeded and Billy McConnell succeeded. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you guys are searching around, you're looking around. Um Billy, you get down close to the ground and uh uh you notice some tracks. Same with you, Tallahassee. You you're, you're kinda looking around and um off a little ways from the tent over near some bushes you spot what looks to be some blood on some leaves on the bushes over there. I was going to say, hey Billy let's run out in the forest together that worked out for me really well last time <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm right behind you Tallahassee okay, so you you come rolling up, you come walking over being careful to, at what you step on and you see over here in this spot near some bushes that's just a little ways away from the tent, uh, there seems to be a pretty good amount of blood on the grass and on the, on the leaves of the bushes around. And then down uh, in the dirt and in the grass uh, around in that area is uh, Sam. Why don't you reach down? And pull out that special package that I sent up to you guys. Oh, oh wait! Since I'm there, do I? Does that mean I get open? Yeah, it? hand it over to yeah. hand it over to Tallahassee Turner. Suck it. So you open the mysterious Run package I had shipped up to you guys. So we we found the package Ooh. sitting by the the blood spots. It's not a package. It's what's in the package. So I got I get to sit next to you to see this. What's in the package? What's in the package? It's oh, a head. Okay, I sent so you guys a human head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting serious with these handouts. <laughs> I have a question though. Does the blood uh, does the blood look fresh, or does it look like it's been there for a little while? Uh, you're a detective. It looks like uh, maybe uh, within the last, uh, probably from the night. So a little. It's been overnight. It's, it's pretty fresh. Okay. But it started to congeal a bit. It's it's dried kind of on top, but some of the there's some some darker parts in the dirt that looks like that looks like it's still kind of wet. Billy, you ask another question, I'm gonna punch you in yeah, your, your, your coconut. Okay, box. <laughs> you All guys right, aren't even you're not even over here. But as yeah, I'm opening go ahead, this, open, as I'm open opening that mysterious this, package. I do have a question for you, Billy. Why is it that we can't get more than a mile down the road that we run into? more blood I mean is it just bad luck and we just find all these people dead everywhere or is there like some serious real demonic presence like leading us to dead people Whoa. we decided to leave this town Billy, this one dang day this too is a camera. so Tallahassee Turner you recognize that immediately because that is the exact same camera that you own that is a Kodak Brownie number two folding camera. What in the world? Where did you find that? I found that at a thrift store nearby. That is an actual 1920s Kodak Brownie number two camera. That's a cool find, Al. That's pretty awesome. Talked them down to 15 bucks. You did? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, they didn't know what it was, but since I've been playing Call of Cthulhu, they had it in a they had it in a display case, and since I've been playing this game, and I'm so up to speed on like 1920s stuff, I was walking by and I looked down at it, and I was like, that's a Kodak Brownie number two. <laughs> <laughs> what a nerd. Oh, that's awesome. That's dude. insane. Billy, this is the same camera I have. Bakersfield, that looks like the camera that uh, you had when you fell off the roof. That is the camera Bakersfield had when he fell off the roof. <laughs> I've actually been describing it kind of incorrectly. It's smaller than I described it. That's cool. Uh, but yeah, that's an actual, that, that camera's over 100 years old. Okay, and so, uh, Next to it nearby also, you see a torn uh, satchel, Billy. Yeah. 
yeah. uh, that looks like it's probably like a, a, a carrying case for the camera. The strap's been ripped, and it's just kind of laying on the ground nearby. Okay, yeah, I grab it, and uh, does it does it look like the camera's damaged at all? The camera looks like it's been damaged a little bit uh, on the front, so... Um, so, uh, it looks like it's been, yeah, it looks like it's been damaged a little bit. It does not look like the, uh, the film compartment has been damaged. So most likely whatever is inside the film is still intact, hopefully. But Tallahassee, uh, knowing this camera very well, you flip it around and you look at the back. Um, the little window in the back of it, it shows how many pictures have been taken. You look at it, you see that it's been that there have been two pictures taken on this roll of film currently. I was going to ask a couple of things as we go into this uh, new sailing place. I mean, unless, Billy, you want to drive me back to my house and I can develop this film. Nope. Okay, that's unfortunate. Uh, <clears throat> Keeper, is there any way I can develop the film in New Salem somewhere? Uh, well, you don't know until you get to New Salem. Okay, I suggest... Fellers, that maybe we stop at a gas station and get pick ourselves up a map. I think we should stop at Dan, uh, Denny's Tavern, uh, you know, and ask him because that's what uh, that other dude said. What's his name? Uh, Jameson. Jameson. Yeah, he told us about uh, Denny. He's a good guy. So let's stop there and we'll ask him. I okay, agree so, with Billy. Okay, so I put up a couple handouts for you. This is what Billy McConnell fa- found in the camera satchel. And so, Tallahassee Turner, seeing as you are the resident uh, photography expert here, um, you will know that if you can figure out what settings that this guy was using on his camera when he took these pictures, then you're going to have a lot higher chance of when you develop these pictures, getting some decent photos out of this and being able to retrieve whatever images are on these uh, are on these pictures. Nice. So, I got a little bit of a puzzle for you guys. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Which, some people might not like when it comes to games like this, but we have a cool object, and so there is a puzzle around this object. Oh, is there a puzzle on the, on the object, you said? Yeah. You're going to have to use that camera to figure out what settings that this guy had set up for taking the kind of picture that he was probably taking. If you can figure out the correct settings that he had set up for this camera, then uh, you will get bonuses to your roles to develop these pictures. If you can also figure out how to get the back part off in order to pull the film out, I will give you another bonus die on your roll. So when you go to develop these pictures, I will give you two bonus dies. Give it to me. I want to figure it out. So as you pull out these uh, these two sheets and you're kind of looking at them, uh, you can tell these look like basically like whoever this the guy was who owned this camera, he kind of wrote down what his favorite, you know, like kind of a quick, a quick reference to his favorite settings on the camera for depending on what kind of pictures he was taking. So, and if you look on the front of that camera up by the lens, you see there's little, little, uh, little kind of switches that go up and down. You know, you'll see some that say like marine clouds, snow on the right side. Yep. And distant view, average view, near view portrait. Do you see that, Seth? So Tallahassee, you would know that if you can, if you can figure out how this guy had his camera set up when he took these pictures you're going to have a lot easier time getting these developed and actually being making sure that you're going to actually get uh, a real image out of these these this film when you develop it. I have a question. Uh, looking around the campsite and specifically around where the camera was found, do we see a tripod anywhere? No, you don't. So I would say the dim is out since he underlined and double exclamation pointed use tripod and since there's no tripod around uh, I would say though that one is probably not the setting used so all right so what do you guys do let's uh take the camera 
and get back in the truck and head towards Denny's. I think, uh, no, I, let's just search around the uh, campsite and see if we can find anything else. I mean, can we tell how long the guy's been there? Does it look like he's been there for a few days? Maybe got some firewood stacked up, uh, a little bit of a fire. Are there any, like, drag marks around where the blood is to indicate that maybe his body got dragged away? Or footprints. Or footprints. Well, why don't you guys roll a uh, natural world? Joy. Or a track, actually. Roll a natural world or a track. Roll 31. They're both 10% for me. Yeah, roll 31. Oh, I got a 91. Two! Oh, man. Tallahassee rolls coming up Millhouse. I rolled a 31. I failed. I got an 80, so I don't... Tallahassee, you succeeded? Yeah, I got a 2 out of 10. Uh, on, so, for your track? Uh, yeah, either one. They're both 10%. All right, I'll let you. I'll let you pick. Were you Were you rolling natural world or track? Because I'm assuming they're both. They're the both the same. Yeah, so. I'll do track, since that's unique. Okay. Uh, looking around, you do see some drag marks that go from nearby. This uh, you see some shoe prints uh, in some spots that where the 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 ground was a little more was a little more moist. Moist. <laughs> so, <laughs> does it look like? The shoe. Sorry, I keep going. Yeah, oh, I was gonna say the footprints are like dragging someone else, or. Yeah. Well, you see the foot. You see the shoe prints, um, nearby where the blood is, and then you see some drag marks, and you see what looks like claw marks. In the dirt nearby, also. Hey, fellers, check this out. Uh, they're pretty deep. Can we follow the drag marks? You can follow them for a little ways, and then they disappear. So, is there anything around where they vanished? Maybe, like, a secret trap door, a <laughs> knot hole that you push? <laughs> is there an alien... A hollow tree? Um, alien circles? Uh, I, would have you, I would have you roll again right there, but actually, since Tallahassee Turner already made a miraculous roll on that, uh, you do not see a trap door or a hollow tree. <laughs> Um, but Tallahassee, one thing you do notice is there are two, like where the drag marks end. So you you seeing you're seeing these claw marks. They almost look they look like footprints of an animal. And then right where the they disappear, the the footprints both kind of stop, but are both very deep right there. And then you don't see any other footprints after that. He noticed that the the footsteps got deeper. Yeah. Right there, but then there was no more. Mm-hmm. Okay, I want to look up and see if there's anything like in the trees. Like it might have jumped in the tree. Uh, all right, roll a spot hidden. Yeah, me too. Uh, twenty-two. All right. Success. Success for me. So Billy McConnell, uh, you look down, you see these deeper impressions in the dirt, and having a spark of inspiration, you look up, and up high in the tree, a good 15 feet up, you see some more spots of blood and a couple of scratch marks, as if deep claws gripped right there in the tree. Um, once you spot that, you are able to see another mark on a tree nearby of roughly the same height. Can I follow that for a little ways, or uh, do I lose it? So after you see that, and then you see another one, but after that, it you start you can't you can't quite see where it's going. It seems to be going off in that same direction. So I, I point that out to the guys. Tallahassee pulls out his forty-five. Because he's a little s- skittish with what's going on. But I think we can uh, I determine that this isn't a bear. You know, this is something that's uh, pretty agile, jumping from tree to tree while carrying a body. Like a baboon. You know what I mean? I mean, this is uh, 
What? Like a baboon. Yeah. You read about them in my book. <laughs> the baboons, baboons of the in, forest. In the forest, right. Anyway, uh... Okay, so yeah, you, you spot it on a couple of trees. It seems to be going in a direction, but after that, it, you, you lose track of it. The, the leaves are too dense, the foliage is too dense up above. Um, it starts going off in a direction of just thick forest. Okay, so, and also, uh, with this realization, guys, of what just, of all of this, I want you guys to make a sanity roll. Oh, sanity. Yeah, that's why I pulled out my 45, because I was like, oh, great. Here here we go again. 48, I, yeah, I, 30, su I succeeded. I succeeded. Wait, why are okay. we rolling sanity? Because there appears to be, a, like, a monster that jumps from tree to tree. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because it Dang. looks as if somebody was killed here, and it was not by any sort of ordinary <laughs> animal. So, remember how we established how you didn't want Tallahassee to go insane every single time he rolled? I yeah. succeeded. Well, I just 14. rolled a 98. <laughs> <laughs> so that plan's out the window. All right, well, you're only going to lose one sanity. If you succeeded, you lose zero sanity. If you failed, you lose one. Well, what happens oh. if it's a fumble? <laughs> the the max amount of sanity you can lose was just one for this roll, so you still just lose one. Oh. All right. I rolled a 91. That's awesome. Seth, way well, to start it out, man. Yep, well done, Tallahassee. Turner. I'm going to just go back to truck with my camera. Let's, let's head out. Bakersfield rolled a 91. Let's go to Denny's, get some breakfast. Uh, you rolled a 91, Bakersfield? Yeah. Okay, so lose one sanity. How do you guys get this thing to close? Uh, you gotta pull up the knob just a little bit, and then, so don't put it down all the way, just put it up just a, a little bit, and then put it down. There you go. Look at Donnie, he like knows all the shiz now. I think we figured, I think we figured out the, the recipe for the, his favorite settings though, wouldn't you guys say? Do you? Well, I don't, th I don't think we know whether it was at B or T. I don't know how to think about that. I think ele F11 is, is a pretty good... No, I think it was uh, uh, it was on moving objects. It was definitely on it's moving objects. It's the top objects. setting on the face of the, the the zoom, or not the zoom, but the uh, the settings. It's got moving objects, and then it says T, and then B at the bottom. In the dark, we got correct. Okay. Unless moving. Okay, so so if you guys feel like you got it figured out, then um. So B and T is un. So we don't use B and T unless it's moving. Oh, you don't... So you don't... We wouldn't use it. You so don't always use B or use, T at all. I thought you had to use, use one or the other. No, it says B or T unless moving. Always use F11. And that's for dark. So just F11, no B or T. Because something was moving. No, moving objects, F11, three clicks on the zoom. So I think we figured it out. Okay. So is that what you guys are thinking? Yeah. Yeah, is, I think... Is that your guys' final answer for the... That's, uh, I, I'm going to say final answer. Everyone good with that? Yeah. That's yeah. Okay, so then what's the shutter speed? Let's see. So there's a number by uh, moving objects. That's your shutter speed. I need you to tell me what that is. What is it 100? See, what's the moving object on the, on the camera? I think it was 100, wasn't it? It's one... I think it is 100. 100 on the shutter speed. So what's your F... What's your aperture setting then? There's a number near that, too. It was, uh, one. So, yeah, it's one. So, 100 and near view is one. So, 100 and one. Then three clicks, so 10. So, 100, one, and then 10 on the zoom. So, looking over all this and um, from what you guys are able to kind of figure out what, what you think probably happened the night before, uh, Tallahassee Turner, being as somebody who does a lot of photography and develops a lot of pictures, you feel... You feel pretty comfortable with what you've been able to figure out here. That you're going to have a real good shot at getting these pictures developed under these with this knowledge. But I guess you're not going to know until you try. Yeah, let's head into town, guys. Let's go to Denny's. We'll get some breakfast. Grand Slam, of course. Grand Slam, of course. Uh, <laughs> we'll talk to Ezra, and then uh, we'll see if there's a place for me to go develop this film. I think I. I got a good feel for what uh, settings this guy had. Feeling unnerved by what you've discovered here, seeing that obviously somebody has been killed out here in the woods and by something that does not appear to be any kind of animal that should be here locally, you start heading back towards your truck. 
Aloysius, you notice that you are actually carrying your colt in your hand as you're walking, and you're not sure. You don't remember when you drew it, but it's in your hand all of a sudden. You all walk back, kind of keeping an eye on the forest around you, being a lot more aware of all the different noises, or lack of noises, as you all climb back into the truck to flip it around and head back towards New Jerusalem. So you continue on on this little side road until you see the turn off where the road uh, splits at the T intersection, left heading back to Dunwich to the north and south to New Salem. So you head south, you're driving for a little ways. You pass a, a nice little farmstead uh, on your right as you're going, which if you remember was the, uh, the Layton farm uh, that Jameson pointed out to you. The road dips down into a little uh, gully, and then you climb a hill. Climbing up the hill in the noonday sun, and finally, once you crest the hill, looking down, you see that you have arrived. And finally, after what feels like years since the events of that night at Mr. Corbett's house, you have finally arrived at the town of New Salem. What are you doing back here, son? Ain't nothing for no one Nothing for no living man You better run while you still can So get on So get on Leave your grown minds on the shelf Physician heal thyself Should've got to get while you could All right, thanks guys for listening to this episode of The Arkham Files. Uh, I hope you are as excited about this new season as we are, Case 003, The Fall of New Jerusalem. Super stoked to get this off the ground finally. We know it's been a long time. We're really sorry that it's taken so long to get this next season going we've had a lot of other things we've you know we've been able to publish which has been cool but yeah it's been a we've been some uh busy beavers you know that's us <laughs> um but yeah there's always a lot going on you guys who play role-playing games you know how it is trying to get your group together and everybody's got <laughs> really busy lives but we do have um a few cool things here i mean obviously we are now in the middle of the fall of new jerusalem so we're going to have new episodes coming out uh, our plan is our is every other week we're going to be publishing new episodes so stay tuned for those and listen out and we have some shout outs for some new patreon subscribers new special agents of the arkham files so we want to give a quick shout out to the, these guys these new subscribers we have uh sarah from the netherlands who signed up who uh yeah all right so yeah thanks sarah Welcome, Sarah. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Glad to have you on board. Glad to have you in the Arkham Files as one of our special agents. Um, and also, like you said, us spreading our reach to the Netherlands as we now further our goals of world domination. So thank you for helping us along with that. Okay, doesn't Sarah have a favorite character? Oh, I think she does have a character. Why don't you say hi? Oh, hello, Sarah. This is Skid Fluter. <laughs> it is so nice to have you. You subscriber. 
<laughs> you sounded Spanish. <laughs> you ruined that's it. That accent. skeet fluter voice is a little rusty. <laughs> it's right. <laughs> oh, yes. We're oh, calling for you. Okay, here we go. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll be Carl Malone as trying to communicate with skeet that, fluter. That, <laughs> that was his skeet cousin, fluter. Escobar. Skeet fluter. Here we go. Hello, Escobar, Hello. Escobar Fluter. Hello, Skeet Fluter. <laughs> all right, all right, take two. <laughs> no, I can't even do it. <laughs> all right, I'm sorry, Sarah. We tried. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, anyway. Please don't stop subscribing to us. <laughs> Skeet Fluter will be very heartbroken. He will be very heartbroken. He said so right there. You got it from here. All right, so... <laughs> Also, some new su subscribers. We got Alma Joseph. So, thank you, my good man, for signing up. You are awesome. Welcome to the crew. Uh, my soul brother. Oh, yeah. So, and we have another shout out for um, the only, all we have for this name is A. Ah. Or Agent ah. A. Or Agent Ah. Agent ah. ah. So, welcome aboard, Agent Ah. Uh, you are amazing. You are now part of our crew. Thank you. Um, and also for these special uh, Patreon members, uh, we are releasing new episodes that are popping up on there for our uh, second show called As a Psychologist, which is where we do recaps of the scenarios that we've played through. And we talk about the scenario, talk about, you know, just lots of goofy, stupid nonsense. So if you like that, and if you want to hear more of us, uh, yeah, we go over the scenarios. We talk about stuff we liked, what we would have done different, um, uh, our favorite parts, worst parts, all that good stuff. So our we've childhood. been releasing those, our childhood. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to get some real deep backstory <laughs> on some of these episodes. We also have a bonus scenario on there too. So don't miss out on any of that awesome bonus content that we have coming up on our Patreon uh, page and our Patreon uh, list stuff. I don't know what it's called. Our Patreon page. Go there. Sign up. Do those things. Get cool stuff. That's it. I think that's it for us. Do you guys have anything else we need to say or announce? Nope. We love you guys. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, guys. Awesome. Yeah, thanks again for listening, guys. You're the reason why we put out this show. It's a ton of fun. We love it. Uh, stay tuned. We are back and better than ever. So have fun and stay crazy. <laughs>